what we discussed in the last class physical change and chemical change continuous continuous yes physical change and chemical change so just we can share the screen kartik hms manogna from mrms and dilip from mrms start your videos Vijay, start your video. And Rathor Gopal, start your video. G. Kranti, MRMS. And Shweta, HMHS, Kalki Mitra. Yes, look at here. We are discussing uh, first, second chapter chemical, chemical reactions and equations. Right in this, we discussed chemical changes and physical changes. Right, we completed the chemical changes examples also. So, can you tell Venu what is a chemical change? Chemical change. Chemical change means when the change change will occur, the new substance will form. Yes, yes. Very good. So definitely we'll get one of the new substance in back. Right? So see here. This is also one of the example to chemical change and the burning of wood. So when wood is burned, its chemical composition is changed to here. Right? So here we will not get again wood from that ash and a heat energy will be released from this here when we burn this. So finally we will get ash here we will not get the wood no so that's why we are considering this as a chemical change. And some of the examples so these are the examples here 
change in color, production of gas, change in temperature. So these are the chemical changes to identify the chemical changes. So these are the indications, change in color and production of gas, change in temperature. Okay. So in all the chemical equations, in all the chemical changes, we will not observe the same uh, identification. So sometimes um, we observe maybe change in color, sometimes uh, gases will be released and sometimes temperature will be changed here. So according to that, we consider that is chemical change or physical change. So see here, change in color. See, uh, when uh, we drop something after some time within seconds, see Nana, the color of the water changed here. See how the color will be changed. Right, so this is also one of the chemical change only. And boiling of egg, burning of wood, rusting of iron, already we discussed all these examples. So all these are the chemical changes. And for fireworks also. Right, burning of crackers also, chemical changes only. Once they burn, we can't uh, replace them again. Burning matchstick, this is also chemical change here. Right. Once it burns, we can't burn it again. Right. See, Nana, uh, this is uh, one more example to chemical change. So, very important one. Listen carefully, all of you. And all of you start your videos. Some of the people uh, stop their videos here. Yes, what you are uh, seeing here, what is this? Tell me. Santosh? Teacher. Yes, what is this? What uh, is showing here? What is going on? Can you guess? Burning of mag burning. magnesium ribbon. Very good. We are burning of magnesium ribbon. See. So what will happen? This burning of Burning of magnesium ribbon in A. So, is it a physical change or chemical change? Can anyone guess? Chemical change. Chemical change. Chemical change. Chemical change. Yes, ma'am. Very good. That is the chemical change only. Here, burning of magnesium ribbon in air, we are saying. Air means uh, which gas? In the presence of which gas it will burn? Oxygen. 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 So what will happen here? See, Nana. So we are taking Bunsen burner and one magnesium ribbon in this uh, holder. Right? By using a holder, we are taking that one. We are burning now. So what will happen after burning of this magnesium ribbon? So when, as burning of magnesium ribbon results in the formation of a new substance, it is a chemical change. Here, new substance will be formed in this. What is that new substance here? You can see here on this plate, ash is forming. See now. Ash. Yes, when we burn that magnesium ribbon, finally, we'll get ash. So, what is the name of that ash? So, we are burning magnesium in the presence of oxygen. So, we'll get magnesium oxide here. So, this is the new substance. Magnesium oxide is a new substance here. We will not get again magnesium from this magnesium oxide. So, that's why we are considering this one as a chemical change. And the properties of the new substance is completely different with the magnesium. See, so after burning, it changes into a white powder. So, the white powder is magnesium oxide mgo so magnesium oxide is formed due to the reaction between magnesium and oxygen present in the air so before chemical equation only so mg plus o2 gives rise to mgo so this is a magnesium oxide here right so when we burn magnesium in the presence of oxygen we'll get this one oxygen means that it's uh, present in the air only so everything will burn in the presence of oxygen so oxygen is a supporter of combustion here right 
So here, this white ash powder is completely different with magnesium. Okay, and will not get again magnesium from this magnesium oxide. So that's why we can consider this as a chemical change here. Right? Understood all of you? Any doubt? No, teacher. No, teacher. Right now. See, next one here. The reaction of dilute sulfuric acid with zinc. So what will happen here when uh, sulfuric acid reacts with the uh, zinc? See, no, no? We have to take one conical flask here. So this is the conical flask. Okay. In this conical flask, what we are taking here? Zinc granules. Zinc granules or we can also call zinc crystals. Okay, zinc granules or zinc crystals we can call. So to this, we added sulfuric acid. Okay, dilute sulfuric acid we added in this. See here, what will happen here? So we are taking rubber cork here. So a rubber cork and uh, we are taking one glass to here. Between here, from middle of this rubber cork. Okay, here zinc granules will dissolve in this sulfuric acid slowly. So when they dissolve from that, bubbles will be released. The bubbles like a gas will be released. I think you know that uh, when we drop a chalk piece in water, uh, bubbles will be released, right? From the chalk piece. Yes, are you observed that? Yes, teacher. Yes. Right. Uh, okay, here also, when uh, zinc crystals dissolving in this sulfuric acid, we observe that from zinc crystals, bubbles like gas will be released from this. So, what is the gas we are releasing from this? when it is dissolving in sulfuric acid solution. Right? Here, when zinc crystals dissolving in sulfuric acid, what will form here? Zinc sulfate and H2. So hydrogen gas is formed by the action of dilute sulfuric acid on zinc. When this two are reacted together, zinc crystals and sulfuric acid, hydrogen gas will be released from this solution. Yes, all of you start your videos. Okay, see now. So how we are identified here, hydrogen gas only released from this uh, solution. How can we know that? Uh, maybe oxygen also released, maybe carbon dioxide also released, maybe ammonia gas also released, maybe chlorine gas also released. How we identify particularly hydrogen gas only released from this solution when they are reacted together. Here, what we discussed here, bubbles like gas will be released from this solution. So that is released, okay, that is passed through this glass tube. So when we bring burning matchstick near to this mouth of this glass tube, that burning matchstick is burns with a pop sound. Okay, that burning matchstick is burns with a pop sound. That pop sound indicates releasing of hydrogen gas from the solution. If oxygen releases, then matchstick burns like that only, continuously. If carbon dioxide releases, simply it is put off. But when hydrogen gas releases from the solution, it burns with a pop sound. Okay, that is the indication to releasing of hydrogen gas. Okay, so here when zinc, zinc is one of the metal, and H2SO4 is the acid. So when metal reacts with acid, salt and 
hydrogen gas released from the solution. Okay, when metals react with acids, salt and hydrogen gas released from the solution. Salt will be formed and hydrogen gas releases from the solution. Yes, are you understood this one? Yes, teacher. Yes, teacher. Yes, teacher. Yes, yes. Okay. See now. So remember the previous example of burning magnesium ribbon in air. So what is the most convenient way to describe the chemical reaction? Yes. What is the most convenient way to describe the uh, chemical reaction? See here. The description of the chemical reaction in a sentence is a lengthy approach. In sentence formation, magnesium reacts with the oxygen. It will give magnesium oxide. Or, we'll write like this one. Magnesium plus oxygen gives Magnesium oxide. So when we write in the sentence formation, it is a lengthy process to write always. Then what is the short form to write the chemical equation? Right, that one I'll explain later. Before going to discuss about that, I want to explain two more activities here based on chemical equations. Okay, just wait. Yes, see here. Releasing of heat energy. For this, we need to take first of all one beaker. Now, take in this beaker some amount of calcium oxide. Okay, calcium oxide. Calcium oxide, we can also call this one quick lime. Do you know lime? Anyone? So, mom. Yes. To that, we have to add some amount of water. Right. So, we are taking one beaker. In that beaker, we are taking calcium oxide and water. So, what will happen here? After some time, this calcium oxide is completely dissolved in this water. Then what are the changes we observe in this? So what will happen when calcium oxide dissolves in water? We are, see, we are taken uh, here, topic name here, releasing of heat energy. From this heat energy will be released or not? Can anyone guess? Yes, teacher. Right. So what is the reaction between this calcium oxide and water? So when calcium oxide dissolves in this water, it will form calcium hydroxide this is calcium hydroxide we can also call slate to lime calcium hydroxide or slate to lime okay so when you touch the bottom of the beaker or sides of the beaker it will hot 
when you touch what the bottom of the beaker or sides of the beaker we feel hot here so from this solution heat energy will be released so due to that when we touch the sides of the beaker or bottom of the beaker we feel hot here and uh, what is the nature of the solution nature of the solution means here whether it is acid or base so how to identify here uh, given solution is acid or base tell me base how to identify it must paper with an epoxy must paper right base okay by using of litmus papers we can easily identify the nature of the solution here so how many types of litmus papers we have two teacher two teacher two pump red litmus paper blue litmus paper okay uh, red color litmus paper and blue color litmus paper so what is the uh, nature of the red color litmus paper and blue color litmus paper so what will happen this red color litmus paper when we take in an acid if it change the blue it is base i'm asking that listen question carefully when we take red color litmus paper in acid what will happen the color will not change very good okay when we take in base this one red color litmus paper we change into blue color yes tell me what about blue color in acid it change into red color into red in base it will not change color will not change right 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 so here the given solution is we don't know whether it is acid or base so for that we need to take both the litmus papers into this this uh, here are you yes so we don't know uh, nature of the solution so that's why we have to take both the litmus paper into this solution red color litmus paper and blue color litmus paper so when we take uh, red color litmus paper into this solution the red color litmus paper turns into blue color litmus paper so that indicates what here base base yes base. so given solution base. is base and uh, here blue color litmus paper also we are taking up that is remains as blue only so with that we can identify here this solution is base that means this calcium hydroxide is one of the base number okay lime water we can also call this as the lime water or slaked lime calcium hydroxide lime water is different lemon water is different okay lemon water is acidic lime water is basic okay don't confuse with that or uh, we have one separate chapter in this class acids bases and uh, salts so in that we we'll completely discuss about this only red color litmus paper blue color litmus paper completely about this only right now so this is also one of the chemical change here because we are taking calcium oxide and water finally we got here calcium hydroxide the properties of this calcium hydroxide and water calcium oxide are completely different and we will not get again calcium oxide from this calcium hydroxide so that's why we can consider this as one of the chemical change any doubts in this no teacher shall i raise this one yes teacher yes teacher yes. yes next one seen na so for this we need to take two beakers now in the first beaker take 100 ml water and some amount of sodium sulfate Okay, I need to ask you for is a sodium sulfate. So the sodium sulfate will completely dissolve in this water. So we can call this this solution as a 
sodium sulfate solution and in second beaker take 100 ml water and to this add barium chloride solution powder so barium chloride so here also this barium chloride after some time dissolves in this water so we call it as a barium chloride solution so what is the color of these two solutions both are here colorless only how the water will be looks like same they are also looks like this only okay both are colorless here so now what we have to do so here we have now sodium sulfate solution and barium sulfate chloride solution we have to mix them together take sodium sulfate into barium chloride so what are the changes we observed here so when we combine them when we mix them together when sodium sulfate solution is added to barium chloride solution here precipitate will be formed at the bottom of the beaker okay and uh, salt water formed at the upper layer what is this uh, precipitate here what we have to we what we have done here we have taken sodium sulfate and barium chloride and right here we have taken sodium sulfate and barium chloride so when we mix them together we got here sodium chloride and barium sulfate okay this is the salt water and this is the precipitate precipitate is nothing but this uh, looks like a curd now okay which further does not dissolve in water again okay so this is also one of the chemical change here because we are taking sodium sulfate and barium chloride two different solutions and we mix them together finally we got salt water and barium sulfate precipitate here we will not get again sodium sulfate and barium chloride from this sodium sorry sodium sulfate and barium chloride from this sodium chloride and barium sulfate so we can consider this is also one of the chemical change any doubts anyone no teacher inko sorry teacher just wait 